Hello everyone and welcome to this special Good Friday edition of CAMSA Connect, brought to you by Cambridge Salvation Army here in the UK. Today we're back in our new buildings in a rather empty, lifeless and stark looking worship hall and we're recalling the events of that first Good Friday when Jesus willingly suffered and died by crucifixion as the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world. Through music, song and readings, we hope you will have an opportunity to reflect on what happened that day and how it affects life in our world here in the 21st century. Well, of our first Good Friday song, the great hymn writer Charles Wesley is reported to have said that he would happily give up all his own hymns to have written this one. It's a powerful and stirring Easter hymn. Please join us in singing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. sentenced to be crucified. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again saying, How, King of the Jews! And they struck him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, 
and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave, no, gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realise that I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jews kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was a day of preparation of Passover week, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull. Here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Thank you, Susan, for reminding us of the Good Friday account from John's Gospel. Well, at Easter time, we are reminded about the strength and depth of God's love. Good Friday and Easter Day are the culmination of God's plan to save the world, and he wants to save the world because he loves every person in it. That's right, and as many of you will know, John 3.16 reminds us that God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son so that no one would perish, but instead would have everlasting life. Now, Easter might seem like a nonsense idea to some. In fact, in a few moments' time, today's speaker, Mel, will tease out the seemingly nonsensical message of the cross. But we believe it's true and that Jesus' death and resurrection is the most significant event in the history of the world. So let's celebrate God's amazing love for the world as we join in singing How Deep the Father's Love for Us. The Father's love for us. Sing with me. How vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns His face away. Wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, I sing upon his shoulder. Ashamed, I hear my mocking words call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is fair.
I'm sure you're all familiar with the saying, it's a matter of life and death. However, in the context of today, Good Friday, and its significance as outlined in the Bible reading we heard earlier, I would like to change that to, it's all a matter of death and life. I wonder what this day means for you. I suspect many of you have indulged in some hot cross buns. Mind you, maybe not for the first time today, as the supermarkets seem to have been selling them since Christmas. Some of you may be wearing a cross as an item of jewellery. Interesting that we can wear a, a symbol of execution as an adornment. God has an amazing way of turning our worldly values and ideas upside down. And I just want to spend a short while looking at some of the ways. The Apostle Paul explores this in his first letter to the Corinthians when he writes, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. He then goes on to say, We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Remember this Paul, who was Saul, had persecuted the early Christians, but had that amazing experience on the road to Damascus where he was confronted by Christ. As a result, his whole world outlook was suddenly turned upside down. Just last Sunday, we were remembering the occasion of Jesus' triumphal entry to Jerusalem. Not in a war chariot, like some earthly king, but humbly riding on the foal of a donkey. During his earthly ministry, Jesus spent 40 days in the Judean wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil. You can read all about that in Matthew chapter 4. And all the temptations were the sort of things we can identify with. You're hungry, why don't you turn these stones into bread? You know you can. Then came the lure of gaining power when Satan said to Jesus that if he bowed down and worshipped him, he would be given all the nations of the world. Jesus turned all the devil's enticements down. That was not his way. During all of his earthly ministry, he turned his face towards Jerusalem where he knew that he would face certain death, death on a cross, for the sins of all humankind. And the good news is that's for you and me. And through that death, he ensured that if we believe in him, we gain eternal life. He gave that promise to the penitent thief being crucified beside him. I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. In purely human terms, it seems such a waste of a life. But in the grand scheme of things, it's the most significant thing to have happened in our world. Such costly love of God to send his Son to die for our sins and give us all the chance of redemption and eternal life. So, as I said at the beginning, it's all a matter of death and life. Jesus' death bringing us, if we believe, eternal life. So what about you? What does the death and resurrection of Jesus mean to you? If you can accept this free gift of eternal life, it will turn your life upside down. The choice is yours. May God bless you.
please join us in a prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. It is a thing most wonderful that even though the message of the cross may seem like foolishness to some, the truth is that you change lives today. We are truly thankful for the extent of your love stretched out on a cruel wooden cross. Thank you that you paid the price for our sins. Thank you that your death has turned the world upside down. May your love turn our lives upside down too. And may we be living sacrifices, pouring all that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be out to love you and serve others. In your name we ask it. Amen. And amen. Well, friends, this is not the end of the Easter story. On Easter Day, we will hear what happened in the garden where Jesus was buried. It's the most happiest ending ever. That's right. So please join us on Sunday for our Easter celebrations. And don't forget our Easter walk tomorrow. Details are in the video description below. Well, to conclude our Good Friday worship, we invite you to join us in singing a song about the power of the cross. So until next time, everyone, keep safe, keep well. And keep connected. God, God bless, bless you. you.